Hello again. I would like to follow up my um, first video on Julian Assange by looking a little bit more into the astrology to see what it can tell us and what lies ahead for this man who is now imprisoned in a uh, British jail. Um, whatever the merits of his case, it's clear that um, what he has done is brought light to the dark places of the world. Uh, those hidden uh, elements behind the face of what you might call consensus reality, as I was talking about last night. This reflects his son in the eighth house in Cancer. Um, the son in the eighth house in Cancer is, uh, I think he's taken it very personally. This has become a, a, a very a distinctive, um, it takes on a distinctive vocational feel about it. Whenever you feel you've found your mark in the world, there's a sense that you need to fulfill it, come what may. You're following a particular personal path, and although there may be personal elements underneath his choice of profession and the choice of things he has come to do, somehow whatever he has done and the way things are working out is in some way um, not inevitable isn't right, but it has a it has a sense of rightness of, of of following through with the natural conclusions because it's bound when you take on. Uh, collective forces, as he has done, the, uh, uh, the National Security Agency, the CIA, MI5, all of these kind of industries, um, which uh, we don't know what goes on at GCHQ and the rest of it, um, except when people like Julian Assange expose the, expose the secrets. And don't, don't misunderstand me for one minute that I think that when you start dipping in to these organizations and what they do and to expose the truth of what they do, um, uh, that it is an easy uh, affair to, to balance. You don't know what you're poking. You don't know what kind of situations you're um, going to bring, br bring out because but all things, all problems, as Freud told us right from very early on, are overdetermined. They're neither just one cause or just another, and they're all part of some kind of uh, scheme or pattern or conditioning and, um, uh, uh, and so on. So when you start poking that bee's nest, you're likely to be stung and draw upon you uh, certain forces that um, you're trying to expose or bring into the light. You might say that the theme of the sun in the eighth house is to is, to, is a kind of dragon fight. And when we see it in the chart, which I shall bring up in a minute, we need to be thinking about that, that um, somehow this has uh, a, a, a something to do not just with the collective, but with Julian Assange's own inner reality, what makes sense to him, what, what, what makes life worthwhile for him. Uh, and indeed his chart is quite full of, of a lot of struggle. When we see his son square uh, Chiron, for example, this man was probably deeply wounded in childhood. It's in Aries, making him feel ineffective or probably a, a sense of not impotency, but the potency of manhood somehow is not not gained. And we know from his um, we know from his past that his mother married various people uh, in rapid various men in rapid succession, at least I think three, four, maybe five relationships, and uh, and the, the men then either ran off or were wrong. Or she, she married into the family, which was some kind of cult group in Australia. And so Julian Assange was never really secured in a, in a masculine identity through the father. And I think that we can see this in the chart. I'm just going to bring, bring up the chart now uh, to show you if I can. Uh, there it is. And I hope that uh, anyway, we can all see this chart um, uh, now as I'm speaking. Here it is, the sun is in the 10th house, it's in Cancer. And as I say, most things, his vocation is taken in a very emotional sense and the, whatever he does in the world is uh, takes on a personal. It's as if the personal and the impersonal uh, become one. That the things going on in the world, you see this Uranus square to um, sun here, born to be a subversive. What was, it, what was his organization called in 1987? The International Subversives. Um, 
he was probably a very highly highly intelligent picking up um ways to um ways to communicate ways to um resolve problems he was very interested in digging around in the dirt if you like finding out what is behind the hidden veil as i say in his own personal psychology this may have something to do with a um the emotional things being picked up within the background of the parental drama going on but nevertheless he takes responsibility for his own decisions and his own choices we all have backgrounds we all have things that are coming through the unconscious of our parental ancestry it's what we do with it that counts so he was always a bit of a rebel here. Yeah, Uranus in the 11th threatens the, the uh, public stability of the same old, same old. You know, it, it, the 11th house has to do with participation in society, the groups, the system, the way that it works. And um, you can see here that he's somehow squared to it. There's a, uh, a, a rebellious spirit, a, a Promethean spirit to bring forth the light in some way uranian light though is very uh, large it's it's pervasive it, it it relates to the overall truths of the collective i talked about um uh, network that film in my previous video uh, um played by a, a man called howard beale who suddenly has a kind of breakthrough or a breakdown and so it's suddenly revealed to him what the truth is going on not the all-pervasive truth of the world, not the philosophical or religious truth, but the, the transient, the real truth, the, the transient actual truth of what is going on, a very objective sense here. Uranus is in Libra upsetting the peace, uh, but Julian Assange was already uh, preconditioned, already pre-patterned to upset the peace. That's something it uh, reminds me of um, Tim Leary, actually. Uh, I think he has moon conjunction Uranus. And um, Tim Leary was described by uh, his friend Ram Dass, Richard Albert, at the in nineteen in the nineteen sixties, as someone that would stick his fingers in a light socket just to see what effect it would have, and um, that's the kind of impetus behind it, the impetus to to shatter known norms, and that's the excitement, that's what feeds into here this uh, vocational understanding. Um, his personality, of course, hidden a bit in the dark. His his um, um, uh, perhaps a, a, an innate shyness can uh, retreat into the shell emotionally, but whatever he does is full of emotional and real conviction. Here we see the square to Chiron here, and at the moment, um, in very interesting that the the new moon this month was at fifteen Aries, and uh, we're going to look at the chart of the arrest as well, perhaps in another video, perhaps in this one. But um, with this, this, this was being activated on the uh, today, actually on the twelfth of April, as I record this in the afternoon. So the new moon was on here, and we've seen this active, this new moon idea it's somehow brewing up underneath. It, it 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 creates a hot spot in there, and then it comes through the planet. And then anything that triggers off that by transit immediately gets a kind of very powerful boost of energy, makes an appearance. I mean, these are only symbols, of course, and they're, they're are, are symbols of speculation and discussion. But you can see them appearing in the outside world very, very clearly. They begin as potentials, but they're also astrological science as kind of portals, or sometimes you can use them as oracles to tune into something underneath the surface a surface of appearances. Here we see this what I was talking about, what brought me into Julian Assange's chart in the first place. This Neptune opposition Saturn natally because I was looking in the 1066 chart because the Houses of Commons had a leak and it took me into what does this leak mean and I looked on the 1066 chart for the chart of England and Saturn was the 10th house in that chart which is the government and, the, and it rules the 11th which is of course the Houses of Parliament a place where parley happens and so on and Neptune was opposed to it. 
Neptune is god of the sea and waters and often represents deluges or breakthroughs of a, of a, 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 a powerful emotional effects. Neptune also has, however, a, a link into the collective soul. Um, what, it, what, what used to be called the anima mundi. And it has a feeling relation to the entire group to which it belongs. And if you belong, if you're a world citizen, there's often an 11th house and uh, a 9th house effect uh, uh, indicates or symbolizes, then this Neptune can take on that feeling that something is coming through it. You see, and uh, he would have known that this self-deception, this 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 cloud or or fog over the truth of things in Sagittarius uh, would have been there. And so his defined duty in many ways here, do you see, with this Saturn, uh, trying to expose the reality the, the, through the informational uh, elements of uh, Gemini here and somehow hacking in through, through into this veil of appearances and, uh, and to, to, to find out truths and then reveal them. Clearly here. He has an intellectual interest a, uh, a, in doing this. This is the dispositor of Saturn. But Mercury trines this Jupiter, trines this Neptune, do you see here, very powerfully. And so you can see this bringing, and bringing whatever is underneath in the secret services of the world, those, what is called the hidden enemies, those things that lie within the collective, within the whole kind of fabric of the, the network of the world. It's the things that we don't see. These are the CIAs, the MI6s, the MI5s, the secret dungeons of the world where torture happens and things behind the scenes are always going Going on that we'd rather not look at but not Julian Assange you see this moon tries the Sun connects connects an emotional feeling with those um, those people in such places as asylums and prisons and uh, charities and all those oppressed people 12th house often rules the vagabonds, the, the people discarded by society or thought of. And see, so you can see these two personal planets in here bringing a kind of emotional, um, uh, an emotional feel somehow. But with Neptune, there is a deep bond, a, a, a deep uh, feeling tone with a, a kind of empathy with the group, an empathy with those souls um, uh, behind the locked doors of society. And so you can see that in part, this is Julian Assange's um, mission, his process, his purpose in the world was to bring these things to light and to bring them to light further. Saturn, however, Saturn's duty is to build up in us as a symbol. He represents that capacity to build up a solid sense of self. And uh, this is done with understanding and intellect and learning and so on in Julian Assange's life. It's highly probable that with this Saturn here um, in Gemini, uh, that uh, as a child, he probably felt rather inferior in, in terms of Indian intellect and understanding. But when he was introduced eventually to computers, something made sense. This is the realm of knowledge, of information exchange, and he sent about uh, uh, creating these these systems where he could well, hack on. I mean, he was sixteen. I think his name he called himself Mendax, and created a bunch of people that broke in or hacked into um, uh, information uh, hidden in other computers across the world. I uh, did a lot of computer programming, but it all changed in two thousand and ten, of course when uh, he broke into some pretty uh, um, concealed stuff from America and then took that on and made it public. Chelsea Manning and all that. Now, it's, it's not my intention here to go to give all the information. This is clearly uh, on the internet and many people much better than I can, can talk about it from the timelines. But we can see it in his astrology. So it is the duty of the Saturn psychologically to build up an identity, something known as ourselves, and to build to 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 be, build a creative element, uh, no, a a defensive uh, element around ourselves, and to stick with that. But it's Neptune's duty to feel an empathy with the with the public soul. 
with the soul of the world, with those people that suffer, usually in silence in the 12th house. I think Julian Assange feels with those people. Uh, he has a natural psychic affinity or bond with it. And believing, I think, that in publishing this sign of Sagittarius, trying here to this um, uh, this mercury by publishing this he would be able to relieve in some way the suffering of all those under the oppression of dictators of those people in power of those people in so-called authoritarian positions which he has done so much to expose by his abilities his mercurial ability to somehow get out information from the unknown places of the world. In the next video, what I'd look, like to look at is the uh, transits that are going on at the moment in Julian Assange and um, uh, explore those in much greater detail. I'm just going to stop sharing this for the minute. I think I'm going to do it in these uh, short bursts because it's such an important thing that I want to take time to consider what I'm saying uh, uh, before I say it. I've done quite a bit of research, but um, it tends to come out here as, as a spontaneous production and in my mind tries to put it together in some semblance of order. But in doing this, I don't wish to undermine the acute individual suffering that Julian Assange is facing at the moment. He, um, he, he faces an unknown future, and, uh, but he has some support from great people in the world, such as Noam Chomsky, you know, John Pilger, and uh, many, many other voices. And it was my uh, interest today to have a look online to see what people were saying. And um, uh, we, we saw some uh, great people coming out in support of Julian Assange. And uh, we hope that his, um, his suffering will not be uh, too much to bear for him. Uh, indeed, perhaps the extrication from that single room where he was under surveillance for the past 10 months might even be something of a relief to him. At least, I hope that in part it will be. See you next video.